Well, first of all, thank you for having me today. Um, I decided to run for Butte County Supervisor for District 5 for a couple reasons. One, um, I've been going down to the county meetings for two years now, um, fighting for some answers around our COVID policies. And as I was down there, you know, laying my grievances at their feet, um, I was hearing from a lot of other people in the community, especially in District 5, with a lot of grievances that they weren't, you know, having addressed either. Uh, fire stations weren't being manned, like in Inskip or Sterling City. Um, libraries weren't being kept open. And, you know, the mobile homeowners were, they're complaining about their space rent increases. So as I'm listening and as I'm getting to know the staff, and the, uh, the various uh, uh, folks in the, uh, and, and the Butte County Supervisors, I thought, okay. And then I, and I realized that Doug Teeter was up for re-election. And it was right in a period of time where I really didn't know what I wanted to do next in this fight. And I said, okay, you know, it's our democracy. This is what we do. If we see things that are broken, that we think we can do better, then this is what we're supposed to do. So I jumped in, filed the forms in November and just started, you know, this mad dash to learn all about politics and uh, jumped into the race, see if I can make a difference. Beautiful, okay, and then uh, you mentioned uh, briefly some of your priorities, the rent stabilization, vaccine mandates. Um, if you could uh, sum up maybe your top two or three priorities in this campaign, what would those be? Yeah, so I basically categorize them into four groups. So uh, medical freedom and public health integrity. So definitely we need answers. We've gone through COVID over this past three years. Businesses shut down. Um, the kids were masked up and they've got a lot of learning loss. Um, these vaccine mandates have caused a lot of problems. Um, the hospital policies, um, the testing, the contact tracing. So um, we need an accounting of that and especially of the American Rescue Plan funds that we might still have on the table to help people heal. Um, so we want to bring integrity back to public health. It's taken a little bit of a hit. Um, number two is the housing security and homeowner stability. Um, obviously I'm in the campfire district. so. People aren't getting their camping permits renewed maybe, or why aren't building permits being reissued faster? Why are the mobile homeowners all complaining across Butte County about these double digit increases when we know that there is rent stabilization ordinances in other counties? So that's the second category. Um, election integrity and vote security. We wanna make sure we have free and fair elections. And then of course the fire safety. So Cohasset and Forest Ranch are two of the communities in this district that have not burned. And if we don't do a really good job of managing that forest land up there, then we're gonna be exposed. So again, the campfire paradise and then the other communities and fire or safety it would be the fourth category okay uh, how do you feel like our current board is doing um, if you would make any changes to their handling of some of their these crises what would those be yeah it's a really good question so as I've been watching them over the past two years I think the biggest issue is a lack of transparency or a lack of actual communication back with their communities there are no town halls held at least not in my district, in District 5. We've been asking for that forever. You can't expect people in District 1, which is Oroville, which is Bill Conley's area, to know what it's like for the people in District 5 or in the middle of downtown Chico. Um, I think Tammy Ritter holds some town halls. She's been doing them. But my commitment is to do more communications directly to the constituents. If you come into a Butte County Supervisor meeting to speak to the board, um, and you're one of my constituents, I will then come see you that right during a break and hand you my card, my information, and say, please contact me. I literally go down there and I watch, again, all these people go up there and get absolutely no feedback. They get no correspondence back. They don't even get a thank you for coming. So I think of more communications is something that needs to happen. Um, again, when we give advice and counsel for putting things on their website and we get no answers. So I think that you know communications to the constituents is my first and primary goal. And what is the sense that you're getting from people in the community? I know you, you touched on frustrations when it comes to lack of transparency, but um, what's the, the overall sense you're getting from people here in Butte County? Yeah, I think definitely the people in District 5 are looking for change. They're looking for new leadership. They're looking for new energy, new ideas, new engagement. So Doug Teeter's a three-term incumbent. So that's 12 years. A lot of jobs have term limits for a reason because you just need to get new ideas new thoughts, people that can ask questions. How is this being done? How can we do it differently? And so I think just a change and again, a new sense of focus and priority and commitment. Um, you know, a lot of the meetings that I go to on the Ridge, whether they're community meetings in Megalia or when I went up to the um, Paradise anniversary for the five-year anniversary and Doug's not there, um, people are asking, you know, why isn't he here? We don't hear from him. So I think, again, it's just a matter of we need something different. We need something new. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your background? I know you, uh, 
you know, have a very strong background in volunteering. Uh, talk about how your background leading up to this point has sort of informed your campaign. Yeah, it's a really good question. So my experience up until when I moved to Chico in 2014 was down in Silicon Valley. And I was an executive in human resources management. So I managed compensation benefits, the programs, the systems, 401k contracts, health plan policies. So my experience in terms of number one, reporting to a board of directors. So I reported to the C-suite, the CEO, the CFO. I would have to go into board of director meetings. So I know what it's like to be a staff leader, a department head that has to go before a board and be accountable. Um, I've also been on a board. So I've been on obviously the ENLO um, board of directors for volunteer services. I know what it's like to be in a position, which is sometimes uncomfortable, to ask your staff leaders, your department heads, for information and ask them tough questions. Why aren't you doing this, that, and the other? So I've been on both sides. I think that Silicon Valley experience in terms of considering we're there to protect shareholders if we're in a high-tech um, public corporation. I feel like we're not giving enough um, we're not giving enough to our citizens as being like shareholders. And so they, we work for them as citizens. And so we should consider that first rather than, I feel a lot of times that the board is reporting to the CAO, um, Andy Pickett, or to the department heads and not to the people. So I think that needs to change. And that's my experience I bring. Since I've been here for 10 years, um, yeah, I, I literally poured everything into a new life in healthcare and volunteering in my community. So I supported the campfire through Coral Apple Foundation. So I was on the ridge for 18 months supporting the survivors. Again, I was a patient ambassador, worked the gift shop, worked fundraising in Enlo. That was a big part of my life. Um, right now I work for 530 Food Coalition, rescuing food every week. So I poured everything into learning this community, city council meetings, school board meetings, the supervisor meetings, the internal affairs committee meetings. So again, it's something that's really important to me and I think that that will end a certain um, perspective that maybe the current politicians don't bring to the table. You've touched on a lot. Is there anything else you'd like to add or anything you wish uh, more people understood about you, about your campaign, uh, anything that you absolutely want to make clear to people who will be voting next month? Yeah, sure. I think, again, that's a great question. So I have a tagline on my billboard that you'll see, which is Make Butte County Honest Again. And when I was at the League of Women Voters event last week, that was a big question people asked me. What do you mean? What do you mean we're not being honest? And I said, well, you need to really take a step back and look, okay? If you look at the Chico Unified School District, they've got a parental secrecy policy that's been a big deal. Keeping secrets from parents is not honesty. Um, if you look at a lot of the things that have gone on at the Butte County level, um, we've had a big problem with pollution coming out of the Neal Road waste management facility that nobody's told the citizens. That's dishonest. Again, for me, being vaccine injured by the COVID shot, I've been begging for them to at least put informed consent on their website, put the VAERS data, put the information so we have true informed consent and I get nowhere. So, you know, a lot of people kind of get offended when, and they think it's pretty negative to, to throw that out there. But I've got a lot of, you know, information and research and two years at least at the county, another two down here at the city of Chico. And there's a lot of secrets that get kept. And I think that uh, people are done with that across the government, across all levels, including, you know, the country and the state of California too. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I do. Again, it's um, really a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for your time. And yeah, vote for Julie 3, don't repeat, and uh, District 5, Board of Supervisor.